Okay, here's a quick video of the Geneva Gear tester and Geneva Gear demonstrator. Let me take this off the tripod and I'll show you the different parts of it. It's basically uh, a small wooden box that I've constructed out of Baltic birch, 13 layer plywood, and then housed inside of it is a Merkelkorf gear motor and that motor is capable of accepting 24 volts and it operates between maybe 5 and 300 RPMs. Uh, that motor has a quarter inch shaft and then it has an adapter on it that's set on there with two stainless steel set screws and it, <clears throat> it enlarges it up to a half an inch. Uh, then the inside of that is drilled and tapped for quarter 28 so when I put the larger ones on there uh, there's a washer that's installed with this socket head cap screw and that prevents them from coming off the end of the shaft during the testing. Uh, but anyway there is a sliding walnut board uh, that is used to adjust the center distance and then once I get that set I lock down these two cam clamps and that sets the center distance and then I can put power to the motor. Uh, the power supply is outside of the box. It's right here. This provides between 0 and 19 volts DC and I can reverse the polarity with this switch here. I'll go ahead and turn this on and then the power is fed with two test leads uh, into the case right here. And again I've got the polarity marked positive and negative here but it's for, for the purposes of this testing it's irrelevant because these motors can run in either direction. So basically uh, this is a Geneva gear pinion and then down here on the table is the actual Geneva wheel. This is a six stop Geneva wheel uh, that produces 60 degrees of rotation per index and I'm going to go ahead and mount these on the tester using the quarter inch shaft. Uh, this is nothing fancy that's just basically a stainless steel quarter inch bolt uh, that is countersunk from below into the walnut board and uh, <clears throat> we'll go ahead and put the components on here and watch it. So the Geneva pinion is put on the shaft and then it is set with a number 832 set screw. I'm going to tighten that down on the flat spot. I'm going to put a little torque on it. Then once that's done, the Geneva wheel itself is going to be mounted. Now I need to put these spacers on here. I'll start with a stainless steel washer and then a little nylon spacer. These, all, all of these spacers and shims and things like this are gotten either at an Ace Hardware store uh, or a, a local hobby shop. We have two hobby towns in Indianapolis that I go to to get some of these uh, brass shaft shims from uh, K&S Hardware. Uh, so anyway, we put the spacer on there. Now I'm going to use a little ball bearing. Again, these ball bearings came in a package that were discontinued from the hobby shop. These are like a dollar a bearing. And they're smaller ones that are used in radio controlled cars. And it's a flange bearing. I'll go ahead and put the bottom one on there and then drop on the gear. I may have to move that micro switch arm. I will have to move the micro switch arm. Let me put this back on the tripod. Move the pinion out of the way. Okay. Now as you can see the Geneva wheel is seated on the bottom ball bearing. Now I'm going to install the top ball bearing and then I'm going to put a small nylon spacer and what this does is this applies pressure to the inner race of the ball bearing. Here's a little spring and then finally a quarter twenty wing nut. That's going to apply a little bit of pressure to the inner race of the ball bearing so that it doesn't pinch the outer race so it ensures that it turns smoothly. So I'll go ahead and set the center distance and basically I'm just sliding this in and out. I'm going to tap it like that and then just back it up just a hair 
just a few thousandths of an inch, and then lock those down. Now I'll remove this from the tripod, and I'll go ahead and apply some power. That's probably 12 volts, which is half of its rated capacity. You can see how smoothly it runs directly overhead. This is solid aluminum. Uh, the Geneva is quarter inch thick, 0.250. Uh, this portion of the pinion, the uh, cam is uh, quarter inch, and then the bottom part is 16th of an inch. And stainless steel fasteners, nylon washers, and I'm going to stop it. Now there's just a little bit of play. Just a little bit of a tick there back and forth. Now I could open up those clamps and close that gap up a little bit and remove some of that. There's always going to be a little bit. The whole idea of this mechanism is to make sure that these two parts are not rubbing against one another. And the only friction that you have is between the ball bearing and the slot. And because that's a machine grade ball bearing, there's almost no friction. You can see the bearing rolling in two different directions as it enters and exits the slot. Now I'm going to shut it off. I'll put this back on the tripod. Pan down. I'm going to shut it off. And I'm going to install a number 832 from below. The bottom side of the wheel is countersunk. I'm just going to put this up under here. I dropped it. I should have brought tweezers. I'm going to push that into position, then put on a small nylon washer then an 832 nut. Now if this were permanent that would be a nylon stop nut. And then I'll put on this little cap. Now I'll give it power again and you can see what that does. Every six rotations you'll get an action on that micro switch lever. Now because of the style of switch that I used and the position that I mounted it, this can only operate in one direction. Uh, though the devices are capable of operating uh, exactly the same counterclockwise as well as clockwise. Um, normally the micro switch is of this style with a roller on it and there is a cam that's installed on top of one of these uh, outputs that uh, is V-shaped and the switch is mounted in this fashion right over the top of the wheel and then it operates in both directions. Now if I were to reverse this one I believe that this pin would contact this arm and probably bend it. This is a very strong motor. Um, you wouldn't want to get your fingers in here because it would probably give you a pretty good pinch before something broke. Um, actually I don't think anything would break. It would probably destroy your finger. So I'm going to hold the micro switch lever back and we'll reverse this. Reverse. Now you can see it operating the other direction. But again, I have to hold that lever back or that pin will take it with it. Now I'll reverse it again. This time I'll increase the speed. So that's the basic Geneva mechanism. This one is going to be for sale on eBay. Maybe pay eBay. Uh, oh, one more thing. Uh, you can also apply a gear, like this is a Boston gear, 
It's just a regular uh, pin hub spur gear and you can remove this hardware. It just depends on what you're going to do with it. You can remove this hardware and insert this gear and then pin the gear by drilling a hole in one of those spokes and you can use that for some sort of output whatever your needs are but there's all sorts of different micro switches to make this work there's all sorts of different adapters that can be used but anyway that's it uh, thank you for watching